Well, the British government faces a number of challenges from blocked trade routes and the new variant of COVID-19 resulting in 40 countries restricting flights to the UK. Also, there's Brexit, which hit yet another snag today. With me now is Bloomberg reporter Joe Mays. Hey, Joe, it's great to see you on Quick Take today. There was hope yesterday that the UK and France would reach an agreement to open up the border. So, so why did this fail? Well, we're still waiting to hear from both the French and UK governments on this. We've had the European Commission come out and say that they want trade routes to reopen and that you know this is very important for the UK and for France and for, for all parties. But we're still yeah, waiting to hear what the UK and France are saying. We think that testing is a key issue. France mm. wants drivers to be tested before they come across and there's debate over which test to use, if the quick turnaround test or the one that takes longer. That's where I think the dispute lies at this point in time. Right. The, as you guys write, the French side is pushing for haulers to take this P the PCR tests, which are more accurate, but the turnaround time is 24 to 48 hours, uh, whereas the UK prefers these lateral tests that are less accurate but can only take up to 15 minutes. Set the scene for us. What do things look like at the border right now? Are trucks just lined up? No, it's pretty chaotic, really. I mean, you have many, many trucks which were destined for France, which have been put in a old disused airfield called Manston Airfield, where we see you know, loads of trucks lined up. It's clearly a very grave situation for the drivers who are having you know, food and water brought to them. And there are worries about fresh food imports to the UK, because clearly many drivers won't want to come to the UK at this point in time from the rest of the EU before being for fear of being caught up in all of this. So the worries about Christmas dinners, will people have all the fresh food they need for those? Uh, yeah, so quite a concerning situation. What does it look like on supermarket shelves as we get just a couple of days before Christmas? Is the lack of access at the border starting to manifest itself in, in supply shortages already? It hasn't quite happened yet. I think the concern it would be more in the coming days that we start to see those shortages because clearly supermarkets had stocked up extensively for the Christmas period. And so it would be a case of would it be kind of in the next two or three days, if this situation persists, might we see those shortages? But for now, it's OK. But we do need a kind of political breakthrough here from the UK and France to, to resolve this impasse for sure. Okay, so as if the the COVID the new strain of the the COVID variant the new variant of the COVID strain isn't enough, this all comes at sort of the the deadline for Brexit negotiations. How is that playing into the delays that we're seeing at the border and the difficulty that that truckers are having getting across? Yeah, there is a, a theory kind of behind the scenes on the UK side, which is that France has been taking this very tough stance on the border as a way of almost exercising some leverage over the Brexit talks, kind of showing to the British, look, here's what happens if you don't kind of, kind of play along with us here. But that might be true, but nevertheless, we know those negotiations are going on, and we know that if there isn't a deal, it would worsen the impact at the border. We know there are border checks in a deal or no deal scenario. That happens either way. But there's a question of how strictly would the rules be enforced. If there's a no deal situation, You'd imagine the, the tensions between the two sides. You can imagine the French customs officials being particularly officious, which would worsen that, that disruption. But either way, we, we expect Brexit to add to the disruption of the border. Can you give us an update on, on where things are with fish? Because fishing rights are, are certainly this, this holdup between France and the UK. Uh, where do things lie now? The latest is that the UK side made quite a significant concession to the EU and said they'd be willing to accept the EU only reducing their catch in British orders by 30%. Now, previously, the UK stance was they wanted to take much more of that away from the EU, but clearly they've made that concession. But today, the EU response has been to reject that concession and say, no, that's not enough. So clearly, the EU is playing exceptionally hardball on this issue. And they, I think they've seen that the UK has been willing to give an inch, and they think they might even give a mile if, if, if they just stick it out. So still haven't got an agreement on fish, but I think we are edging closer and closer to a compromise. Joe, you're joining us from, from Kent in the UK. I'm just curious how you're thinking your life might change come the new year because of Brexit, if at all. Well, it might be a bit more difficult to travel on the side roads around my home because I've, I, I live right next to one of these new inland border facilities which have hmm. been created to, to hold trucks. So if it is the case that we see lots of lorries and uh, vehicles being diverted away from the port to stop disruption, that will clearly affect the side roads. So it might affect me in that way. And also, yeah, as we've been talking about, will it be the case that in supermarkets we have less of certain products because the EU drivers don't want to come to the UK to bring them for fear of being caught up in disruption? Who knows? So I think, yeah, it could, uh, could affect me in a personal way, but obviously professional I'll be, I'll be here. I'll be here reporting. Yeah, it certainly uh, has been keeping you busy. I just want to end asking about vaccines here, and, and to what extent the delays at the border are affecting vaccine shipments. 
UK government has been saying that they are bringing in vaccines in any way they can. So we have air cargo coming in. We have obviously them being brought over by, by road transports. There has been some reports of distribution of a vaccine in Kent being affected by all these traffic problems. But by and large, it hasn't been a problem yet. But clearly, that is a worry that the government has. And that's why they want to resolve the situation with France as quickly as possible. And clearly, the rollout of this vaccine is absolutely critical to the UK's response to the virus. We have this mutant strain. And it's only when we reach high levels of vaccination that life can get anywhere closer to normality. So clearly, yeah, it's a massive priority. Yeah, Joe Mays uh, on the ground in UK, uh, in Kent in the UK. Thanks, Joe, uh, for your time, for joining us on, on Quick Take this morning. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.